Good morning and happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The cross and the the resurrection are the events that are at the very heart of the Christian faith and the Christian gospel. A reminder as we celebrate again this morning that God is always bringing life in the midst of death. Welcome wherever you are. Welcome to this festival Easter Sunday worship. We pray that it will be a blessing to you as you share resurrection joy. A word of thanks to those who are assisting with the service this morning. Tom Tuttle taking care of all things technical. Carol Frakes Omernick who has uploaded to our website resources to assist you in worship this morning. Greg Beam leading leading our congregational song from the organ. Judy Jackson leading our song from the piano and coordinating our singers and our singers. Sue Dobner, Carl Jackson, Jan Milkey, and Lyle Amundsen. We want to say a special word of thanks, too, to Shara Bagda, who is sharing her gifts from the violin this morning to enhance our worship. Our lector this morning is Sue Dobner, and Linda Petrushka will be sharing with us a word with with the children. We will be getting together again at 11 o'clock this morning via Zoom for a Sunday conversation. The invite to that Sunday conversation was in your Saturday email. There will be no Tuesday Bible class this week. May God bless our worship this morning.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin 
that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who is God-fearing and does what is right is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, 
and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. Last of one, as to one untimely born, Christ also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And God's grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. And now here's Linda with a word for the children. Good morning. Happy Easter. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. As we celebrate Easter, we'll see all kinds of things today that will remind us of Jesus and how much he loves us. You might see little baby animals, little lambs, and little ducks, or a little rabbit, all reminding us of new beginnings, or maybe jelly beans in all their different colors, that have symbols, they mean different things, but to me, the sweetness of God's love. And some of you may have even had traveled through resurrection eggs this week. And all these eggs, whether you have resurrection eggs or hard-boiled eggs at home or eggs filled with candy, when you open them, think of all the things we traveled through with Holy Week this week. From our little donkey on Palm Sunday to when Jesus sadly died on the cross for us on Good Friday. And the best of all, our empty egg. And you know why it's empty. Because of the empty tomb. But I don't know. I think one of the best things that remind me of Jesus and his love and everything that he did for us, dying on the cross for our sins, and rising to new life is when I see a caterpillar. You might be thinking, Miss Linda, a caterpillar reminds you of Jesus? Yeah, well, you know, what caterpillars do is, you know, they have a life, and they're kind of hanging around flowers and eating leaves, and, and then one day they're called to just spin a cocoon or a chrysalis around them, and they go into complete darkness, and when they're in that cocoon and in that chrysalis, part of them dies. Yeah, that caterpillar dies. But 
just a few cells are left behind. And those cells inside that chrysalis, they go into some big word called a metamorphosis. And that means change. That means going from darkness into new life. Well, let's see what they tur turn into once, they come, once that caterpillar comes out of that chrysalis. I'm going to invite Pastor Jim down to kind of help us out with that. So Pastor Jim, I have a real pretty box here. And we're going to pretend that that's our chrysalis. And our, um, something of new life is just going to bust out of that. So would you open that box for us and see what happens? Oh. <laughs> yeah, butterflies. If you wind them up really, really tight, they'll really fly. Whoop. But anyway, our butterflies representing new life. And I hope that if you see butterflies in the upcoming weeks with our springtime coming, that it reminds you of Jesus' love and new life. Happy Easter. The resurrection is God doing for us what we cannot do ourselves. Let me say it again. The resurrection is God doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And if there's any year where we've learned that so much is out of our control, so much that we cannot do for ourselves, it's this year. The resurrection is God doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. On that first Easter morning, the women went to the tomb with a deep sense of disappointment. They had been following Jesus for three years and thought that he was the one. Now, in the span of just a few terrible, ordeal-filled days, he had been arrested, tried, sentenced, beaten, crucified, and finally died. On the morning of the third day, these women were left with the grisly task of going to the tomb to finish preparing a bruised and bloody body for burial. Adding to the sense of disappointment was the sense of fear and alarm, the realization that they might not be able to get into the tomb at all. Mark writes, they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? See, they didn't go expecting an empty tomb. They didn't go expecting to witness resurrection. But resurrection was exactly what they were experiencing. The stone was already rolled away and the tomb was empty. Again, Mark, a messenger was standing there with the news, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. The drama in the story is that in the midst of what was a fairly routine and normal, if not also unpleasant task, resurrection intruded on their lives. What they refused to believe, even though Jesus had told them, was in fact true. In fact, if our first report, first reaction to a report of resurrection is cynicism and skepticism, we're in good company. That was exactly how these women reacted to the news of resurrection. And they were among those who knew Jesus best and had heard Jesus say repeatedly that on the third day he would rise. As we'll see in the weeks ahead, Easter faith is often a mix of trust and doubt, of belief and disbelief. You see, there are two ways at least to miss a miracle. First is to dismiss it, to reject it too readily as if astonishing things never happen. And second, to domesticate it, to accept it too readily, as if it isn't astonishing at all. And the resurrection of Jesus is nothing if not astonishing, reminding us that the resurrection is God doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And there's more. We hear in the East, what we hear in the Easter story is not just resurrection, but promise. Listen to how Mark says it. Go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. 
The promises embedded in these few words are multiple, manifold, abundant. He has risen, just as he said. You will see him. Peter, you will see him. Even Peter, the the Peter who in the very last moments of Jesus' life denied being a follower of Jesus, tell his disciples and Peter that they will see him. For all of the ways that Peter denied and disappointed Jesus, for all the ways that we deny and disappoint Jesus, there is reconciliation and forgiveness in resurrection. It's the reconciliation that restores us to life and relationship with God. And the promise to you and to me, along with those disciples, is that we will see Jesus. I have seen Jesus, my beloved siblings in Christ, in knowing that you online are viewing this worship. I have seen Jesus in your words of encouragement. I have seen Jesus in the acts of kindness that you are doing for friends and neighbors and strangers. I have seen Jesus in the faces of the residents of Scandia that I visit with by FaceTime. I have seen Jesus in all the ways that the Spirit is guiding us to be church in these difficult times. Indeed, we have seen Jesus. And I invite you each day to look around you in resurrection, joy, and hope. Where will you see Jesus today? Mark's version of the resurrection of Jesus ends abruptly, surprisingly, perhaps even disappointingly. If you or I were writing the ending to this gospel, we might say something like this. The women were overjoyed with delight. They began singing and dancing and high-fiving. They couldn't wait to go get going to tell the disciples the happy ending to the gospel. But that's not the way of Mark's gospel. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Which actually seems like the perfect resurrection story for us to read in the second Easter of the pandemic. We have discovered what, how difficult sometimes real life can be. That there is disappointment and there is hope. There is blindness and there is insight. There is silence and there is proclamation. There is doubt and there is faith. Mark's story of Jesus is so utterly and wonderfully realistic and so utterly and wonderfully relevant to the realities of our lives. It seems to me that part of the miracle of Jesus' resurrection is that what seems like the end of the story is actually a new beginning. Eventually, the women do go and tell the disciples. The disciples do see Jesus. Jesus does commission all of them for ministry. And the resurrection goes on and on, as people tell the story of Jesus and lives are transformed in the life of God, and then they go and tell others the story of Jesus and their lives are transformed and on and on and on even to this day. There is no end to God's work in the world. There is no end to God's project of resurrection. It's always a new beginning, which after all is the good news of our baptism, that every day is a new beginning, a resurrection in the risen Christ. And especially, dear church, Easter Sunday is a new beginning. For those who despair that death-dealing powers have the upper hand, fear not. Easter means that God ultimately is and will be victorious even over the powers of death. For those who feel isolated and lonely, fear not. Easter means that we're all together in the risen body of Christ even if physically we're unable to gather. For those who despair that our guilt is too great for God to give, for God to forgive, fear not. Easter means that God has cleared all accounts, liberating us from shame and reconciling us to God and to each other as God's children. For those who despair in the midst of anguish or pain, take heart, you are not alone. Jesus suffers with you in solidarity and companionship, and Easter means that you will rise with him. For those who despair over a world filled with hate and violence and scapegoating, be encouraged. 
In Christ's passion, God has taken the place of the scapegoat in order to expose humanity's violent ways. And Easter means God will one day overcome violence once and for all. Indeed, Easter means that God has taken one of the worst things, a Roman cross, and remade it into one of the best things, the tree of life. In the empty tomb, that great divine mystery, God is giving us life in the midst of death, that very thing we cannot do for ourselves. Because as we said, the resurrection is God doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Together with the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
We bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. <clears throat> Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, those who grieve. We remember especially those whom we name aloud. Marjorie, Marjorie June, Don, Wally, Wally John, John, Julie, Julie Terry, Terry, Sharon, Gary, Robin, Susan, Clink and Sharon, Irv, Bill, Patricia, Sue, Will, Connie, Jody, Pat, Eric, Gordy, Don, Barbara, Marilyn, Adeline, Tom, Ron, Phyllis, Phyllis, and all whom we remember in our hearts and lift before you. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, in our neighborhoods, and in our communities. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the joy and hope of Christ's resurrection, we bring our gifts to God's altar, and we ask God now to bless these gifts for the sake of God's kingdom. Let us pray. God of love, you call us your beloved children. Receive our lives and these gifts which we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God give you the <clears throat> spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus Christ. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go, and, go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.